Thank you. Hello, dear teachers. You really mean it when you say that my feeling good and my feeling bad is only about me related to me. You, you can use a lot of different excuses. People say, I'm sad because my lover left. And we say, no, you're not. No, I'm sad because my lover left. We say, no, you're not. I say, wait, I wasn't sad. My lover left. Now I'm sad. I'm sad because my lover left. And we say, no, you're, you're sad because you're not in alignment with who you are. And you may be attributing into that, but you have control. You don't have control over whether your lover leaves, but you have control over the direction of your thought. And the way you feel is about the direction of your thought. You have the ability to focus in ways that you have not exercised. Too many people are t dependent on the behavior of too many others, which you can't control. And then it puts you in this uncomfortable position of needing to be true control freaks in order to feel good. And then as your world gets bigger, you find that there are too many moving parts and you find less ability to control. And so then it all begins to break down as the moving parts become more numerous, where when you get it, when you decide early on or as soon as you can, that you're going to stop trying to control the uncontrollable which is everything that everybody else is doing even doing with you stop trying to control the uncontrollable and control the only thing you can control which is your relationship with your vortex you'll be joyful and then the cooperative components will come and match you and you'll find all kinds of people in your life lovely to be with and play with you see let's offer this one strong statement because we haven't said it before let law of attraction do all of the controlling and you just adjust your vibration so you have to stop looking at what you don't want and start looking at what you do want but we've never known anybody who could just stop doing that you have to start doing something else and that's the whole point you, you want to focus yourself into the vortex and we know that the fast way in is to just care about how you feel and when you get in there everything you want is in there so some of the these processes that you describe feel like effort and the effort doesn't feel good but you see it always takes effort and let's talk about why it takes effort and let's just tell it like it is focus is effort because law of attraction will hold you to your dominant vibration so if I've been beating the drum of I don't have enough money and I've been noticing evidence of not having enough money and in my noticing that I don't have enough money, I activate a vibration so it keeps me in that position of not having enough money, then to think about having more money is not as easy as noticing that I don't have enough money. It takes effort to imagine beyond what is. That's really what we're talking about. It's easy. It's like it's easy to turn on the television and watch what they're offering. It's more difficult to think your own thought. It's easy to just hear what someone's saying to you. It's more difficult to guide the conversation in a more positive direction. It's easy to observe. It's more difficult to focus. And yet there is so much more reward in focusing than there is in just observing. So most people have trained themselves. You have patterns of thought about money. You have patterns of thought about your body. You have patterns of thought about teachers. You have patterns of thought about government. You have patterns of thought about ecology. You have patterns of thought about medicine. You have patterns of thought about animals. You have patterns of thought about cats. You have patterns of thoughts about dogs. Some of you like dogs and don't like cats. Some of you like cats and don't like dogs. You have patterns of thoughts about all kinds of things. A pattern of thought just meaning a thought that you thought. Maybe your mother thought it and she thought it and spoke it and then you thought it and listened. And then it doesn't matter where the thought got started, but you've got an active vibration about a lot of different subjects. So let's say your active vibration about the subject of something that you want improvement in let's say your active thought is that we are in the middle of a financial crisis and let's say that your active thought is that costs are going up and incomes are going down and the government is trying to fix it but there are so many moving parts that they even the best of them are in a state of confusion and so that's your active thought that you've talked about it you've thought about it you've listened you've reasoned it out that's your active thought well it takes discipline to think a different thought and many people would say 
It's not just that it takes discipline to think an improved thought, Abraham. I don't want to think an improved thought because I've been trained to tell it like it is. I've been trained to face reality, to tell the truth. So now this vibration, this reason that it's harder to think a different thought has many layers of reasons. My mother told me to always tell her exactly the truth. And I don't always do it, but I feel guilty every time I don't. So uh, I've trained myself into this thought and now it's difficult to think a thought that's different. And we want to say, oh, hear this. The only reason that it's harder to think the optimistic thought about the subject that you've been pessimistic about is because the habit of thought has a vibration active within you and law of attractions holding you there. Law of attractions holding you there. Law of attractions giving you other thoughts that match it. Law of attractions bringing you to people who think the same thing. Law of attractions bringing evidence to you to support your belief. In other words, of course it's hard because reality has been formulating around it and you believe your reality. and. Oh, did you just hear that? You believe that reality and we want you to believe this reality. We want you to believe the vibrational reality. We want you to believe the reality of the whole of you, you see. And when these two realities merge, and the only way these, oh, this is so good. The only way these two realities can merge is if you come this way into your vortex, because your vortex is never going to merge with this reality. If the source within you would merge with sickness, your planet would be sick and dead soon. If the source within you would merge with economic decline, it would be over for you. In other words, there would be endedness, but that's not ever going to happen because the whole system is such that the source within you holds the leading edge position that is achieved by your asking from the contrast that you live. Are you getting that? When you know what you don't want, you ask for improvement and improvement becomes the new order of the day and the new ones being born and all the new energy coming in all come from that vantage point. We've all got a perpetual well-being thing going on here that no matter how negative any one of you get, you cannot disrupt the system. All you can do is pinch yourself off and have an unpleasant time for a while until you croak and then you're right back in the game again. You see. And in those instances in which I f actually feel good or bad, then it's about me to me. When you recognize how you feel, then you are taking responsibility for what's happening. In other words, when we first began expressing in this way, it was delightful to watch Esther because when something really wonderful would happen, she would say, I did that. Mm -hmm. And when something not wonderful would happen, she would say, I did that. And there was something empowering about knowing that yes. since she did it, she could do it a different way if she chooses to. But it's easy to forget because there are so many moving parts. It's so easy to give other people credit for the way they behave. Oh. That's sort of what feels logical to you, but it isn't logical because the way they're behaving to you always matches your expectations. People will raise or lower to the level of your expectation. And that's why sometimes it's hard to focus yourself into a new place. As we say, you've been thinking that way. You've been getting feedback, which is why you think that way. So you get feedback, which is why you think that way, which is so you get feedback. It's just a spiral of attraction, you see. But only when you care about how you feel. So you start directing your thoughts based upon how they feel rather than upon the reality. Esther will say, Abraham, but it's true. Not so much anymore, but she tried it for a while. But Abraham, but it's true. You got to give me that. And we say, don't use the truth of something as your criteria for your focus. Because there are all kinds of things that are true that you don't want to keep active in your vibration. There is a rampant active vibration around the world and especially in your planet that said times are financially hard. And as long as you keep beating that drum, the stuff that's queued up for you in your escrow, in your vibrational reality, will be slowed down because your thinking that times are hard puts you in a place of disallowing them. Meanwhile, there are people who are accustomed to thriving in all times that are making out like bandits. And then you say, 
That's wrong. You're not supposed to thrive in this hard economy. We're all supposed to suffer in this suffering economy. We say, hear what you're saying. You want to praise success everywhere you see it. You want to praise thriving everywhere you see it. You want to tune yourself to thriving, not to failing, you see. You can tell by the way you feel how the source within you is looking at it. Source within you is not worried about this economy. And when you do, you feel bad, but you don't feel bad because you're worrying about the economy. You feel bad because you're separating yourself from source who does not worry about the economy and using worrying about the economy as your excuse to separate yourself from source. Starting to get this, aren't you? You're not ever going to look at the absence of something that you want and feel good. It's just that simple. You cannot look at lack and be in alignment with who you are. You cannot criticize and be in alignment with who you are. You cannot be mad at somebody and be in alignment with who you are. You cannot be afraid of anything and be in alignment with who you are. A battle against anything is a battle against you. Yes. That's the best way of saying it. A battle against anything is a battle against your alignment. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing you have to know. Oh, and think, while it's a little difficult to wrap your thoughts around this because it's not the way many of you have been thinking, we got to tell you, it's a whole lot easier than getting all those moving parts to line up. So let's see. So Iraq is a mess. And they weren't a mess before, but now they're a mess. And maybe it's our fault that they're a mess, but they had problems and we wanted to straighten them out and, and now we've just made it worse. But now Iran, right next to Iraq, they, they've never gotten along with each other. And, and I don't really understand why they've not gotten along with each other. It goes really far back deep. They probably don't even really know what it is, but they're sort of pitted against one another. And now it looks like we're sort of gonna be swept into that. And then Israel, Israel, I don't really understand what's going on over there. And then the Palestinians, I don't know whose land it really was to begin with. And I don't know why they want to live there when there's so many other places that they could live. And I don't know why this little piece of land is so important to them. And I, and I don't know why we're also supportive of them and why we're not more supportive of that. I don't know how to get them talking to each other. It seems like if they could all just get along, but it doesn't look like they're going to get along. And we send emissaries over there and they don't seem to understand it. It's just too big. It goes too deep. And this is our... Uh, 50th year of, of really trying to involve ourselves in it and it, it is getting bigger and getting worse and there have been many many hundreds of thousands of people that have died in this conflict and I don't really understand what any of them thought about it and I don't know what to do about it and and I know that there are a lot of people that I love that are over there that are working on it and trying to do something about it and I know they all have their perspective but I don't know how broad their perspective really is I don't know how much those soldiers that have gone to really fix it really understand about all I don't know how much they get to really talk to the people that are there. I don't really know what the Iraqi people are really thinking or feeling. I don't think they really like us very much. I think they would like us to leave and yet I think they're afraid that if we leave that things will get worse and, and I don't know I don't know. I thought I voted for someone who was going to do something different about it but I don't know what he was dealing with. I don't know what who said to him when he got there but it seems to me that what he said before he was elected and what he's doing after he was elected was not really the same thing and I sure would like to talk to him about it but I don't think there's much chance that I'm ever going to get to talk to him about it. I'm not even I'm sure if he really has a clear idea of what to do about it but there are just so many mo and we say just kill me now <laughs> how are you ever going to sort that all out now let's talk about Michael Jackson's death so <laughs> how are you going to sort that out how are you going to sort that out how could you ever sort that out and really don't you just want to go in the vortex <laughs> Don't you, don't you want to just leave them all to whatever they're creating and just go into... Now, here's what happens when you go into your vortex. When you see people afraid of bombs dropping on them, you ask for a world that is more peaceful. When you see children suffering, you ask for a better life for them. When you see intolerant people speaking only of one right way to live, you ask for a more diverse and understanding world. You have created something so magnificent in your vibrational reality and all of your attention to all of that stuff that holds you apart from what you've created keeps you from being the whole being that you are you see trying to control the uncontrollable 
keeps you outside of your vortex and these simple processes of wanting to feel good and reaching for the thought that does and reaching for the thought that does and reaching for the thought that does until it does and then holding to the thought that did feel good and holding to it and holding to it until you have activated and trained yourself into that vibration until you become a vibrational match to the better world that you are asking for the better world cannot show itself to you but in the moment you become a vibrational match to the better world that you're asking for it'll show up here and here and here and here you'll rendezvous with those on the same wavelength when you try to talk to anyone who's on a different wavelength it's just blah 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 how unsatisfying you express your truth they express theirs nobody hears anybody it's just more combat all oh, we might as well just drop bombs on them because we don't understand them and they don't understand us but when you get into the vortex now cooperative components assemble wouldn't you love to have political leaders in the vortex where other political leaders could rendezvous with them where the solutions are you see but you can't take your political leaders and drag them into the vortex you can when you see them not in the vortex you can want them to be in the vortex then you can script them in the vortex then you can imagine them in the vortex then you can watch for evidence of them being in the vortex in other words you can inspire people into the vortex by seeing them there but you got to be in the vortex to do that you create a better world only from inside the vortex you've created a better world for those who are not resisting it and for future generations with everything that you put into your vortex into your cooperative vortex but when you look at the reality and hold yourself apart from it then you're not going to see it in your life experience not because it's not here to be seen but because you're holding yourself on a different vibrational channel so when you run around waiting for somebody to do something to make something better somebody needs to get more money and give it to them and somebody needs to take more money away from them and give it to them there are too many moving parts but when you get into the vortex everything that you have put into your legacy everything that is lined up for your inheritance comes quickly and easily to you and then the hard part which is people who are outside the vortex looking at you in the vortex thriving you got to be strong enough that their discomfort with your thriving doesn't throw you out of the vortex because you can't get sick enough to help sick people get well and you can't get poor enough to help poor people get rich in other words you can't suffer yourself into their understanding you have to succeed yourself into their success you have to appreciate yourself into their well-being you have to adore yourself and them into their thriving you see you got to be in the vortex or you got nothing to give nobody that was good too <laughs> we are trying to distract you from the belief that you are so wrapped up in that is keeping you out of the vortex we are we started to say to you right before you um, didn't want to hear it and and oh, which makes sad. you a little bit psychic because of what we were about to say to you we're about to say <laughs> to you that we can we can feel ourselves expressing to you the perfect solution to the question that you've posed and it's bouncing off of you because you're so locked in to the thought that you've already got going on so now I don't so, feel that though I don't so, I don't I don't, wait, I don't feel I don't so, I don't feel that because I have, I have an, I have an appreciation that I, I'm only, I, I'm looking. Like my, my other flaw is that I'm looking at that as the sole avenue. I'm looking at that as the sole avenue for affecting this hundred thousand dollars. But I know because of past experience and circumstances and events and the creative unfolding that everything has happened over the last few years. I know, and hopefully you can feel this. I know that I have the ability to open up other avenues. We know you have the ability. We just don't feel you doing it now. But that's where I come. Uh, that's where I would like to better understand the fine tuning then, and, the, and probably right. well, the application the, of the focus well, it's, wheel. Well, it's simpler than you can hear. And what it is is you just stop talking about the issue. You don't. You never again speak about the exchange rate and its disadvantage to you. You okay. never speak of it again. Okay. That's easily done. <laughs> no, seriously, it's easily done. It's easily done. I can do that. I know I can do that. I know I can do that. Well, then you're done. <laughs> because, 
because when that when that's no longer active within you then you will be on the cusp of hope and belief and the vortex will take you in and and the path will be bright and easy for you to see my work here is done thank you Wait, everyone sit down. <laughs> You're the one. We appreciated that last dialogue because a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. And the reason that you believe it is because you think it and then things actualize around it to confirm the thought so you know you're right because you believe it because you think the thought and things keep actualizing around it to confirm the thought when you have the advantage of seeing the request and seeing where someone is in relationship to the request it doesn't mean that in other words, our friend really did not need us to stand there with his inner being and try to coax him forward because his inner being is coaxing him forward. The only value that we have to you or that any of you have to others is if you can say something or shine a light on something that causes a willingness to focus slightly different because when you focus slightly different then your point of attraction shifts and then the evidence shifts too we were attempting something that we don't often attempt and we don't really encourage a sort of quantum leap in thinking in other words we ask a lot of you first of all when we ask you to never mind reality that's that's really a big thing to ask of you because you've been taught to face reality every day of your life you've been comparing your reality with other people's realities uh, focusing on reality seems to be the order of the day you have all kinds of piles of good and bad you have laws in order to sort it out in other words the majority of the life that the majority of people live is outside the vortex just sorting out the details and trying to decide whose details are better than others but you're all powerless in getting anybody to deal with their details in a different way than you would like them to deal with them in other words, it's sort of not working out very well in terms of the satisfaction of life. So when we visit with you and we say to you that you are vibration first and foremost and that your reality as it exists now does not mean diddly squat, that's hard to hear when you've just had a financial decline that is evidenced by bank accounts by your ability to purchase by so many things you're getting all this feedback from life that says no Abraham it's this way and we say your now reality is the only your belief in your now reality your attention to your now reality is the only thing that keeps you from your vortex reality your vibrational reality which is the reality that you want now think about it in terms of sickness if you're sick if you're sick maybe you are maybe you've got the flu maybe you have a, a bigger disease that they have given you a label that's scary so you're standing in a body that is sick and you don't want to be and but it's real you get up and your head hurts and and you move your body and it feels weak and you try to eat and the food doesn't taste good it's real it's real it's real it's real and then here we come along we're so chipper and frisky we're standing over here in your vibrational reality and we're talking about the enhanced well-being that you have created as a result of your sifting through this sickness and we're saying to you you are so well you are so frisky you feel Feel so good you have so much vitality your body is at the top of its game you have the, the you have energy to spare you you are tuned in tapped in turned on you are more alive than you've ever been we get it that you want to say Abraham look at me I'm sick we get it 
And our only value to you is that we refuse to see your sickness. We will only see your wellness. But us seeing it doesn't do it for you. You got to want to look over here too. You got to want to look over here. You got to believe in this vibrational reality with such fervor that you distract yourself from the sickness even though it hurts. That you distract yourself from the decline in your bank account even though you're afraid. You have to want so much to tune into the wholeness that you have become that you are willing to ignore all of the reality details and all of the evidence and all of the people from the peanut gallery that are pointing to you and calling this all the people that give you the diagnosis and all of the people that are giving you your credit report you have to ignore reality if you will ever move in the direction of vibrational reality because you cannot do both at the same time it's one or the other it's one or the other and the thing that keeps you from doing the one is the other. In other words, I go this way and this way and this way and this way and this way, which means you don't move at all. But when you go this way and this way and this way and this way and this way, when you try, when you try for hope, when you try for belief, when you try, when you leave the argument behind, when you leave the justification behind, when you leave the rationalization behind, when you leave the reality behind, when you finally pronounce to all who are hearing and even those who cannot hear you, reality as it exists does not mean diddly squat. It has always and ever only been the balance off place for who I really am and who I really am is this being who feels this being who feels love and confidence and security and vitality and well-being this being who has trained myself into the feeling of it and not without reason because only a little bit of effort at training myself into the feeling of it brings evidence brings more evidence brings more evidence brings more evidence it's not like we're asking you to just believe until you croak and then get your reward in heaven others do that to you but we do not we say to you when you find reason to get into your vortex and hold vibrational alignment with what's in the vortex the evidence comes and it comes quickly and it comes quickly and it comes quickly because you are deserving beings and you are being Beings of well-being you are beings who are creators life is supposed to be good for you and if you were not lazy about your thought if you would not let reality oh I can think of that easy because I can see it right there it's really easy to think of what's what's it's easier to turn on the television and watch someone else's portrayal of life and the terrible portrayal of life that they give you they look all around the planet to try to find something wrong they slant it even more negatively they dramatize it with music and then they bring it right into your living room and they say this is the picture of life on planet earth and we say no it is not it is not even an accurate picture of life on earth it is a distorted distorted point of view because so much of the world has discovered that you will give more of your attention to things if, they're, if it smacks of a problem than you will to something if it smacks of love and upliftment, you see. You